Good morning, everybody. It is the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive at Higher Things. And joining me today for the very first time is Pastor Ruiz, who is at Faith Lutheran Church in San Antonio, Texas. He's a, a good buddy of mine. And we, we, we used to have coffee together when I lived down south. How you been, man? Good, man. Thank you. Yeah. How about you? I'm doing all right. Uh, it's it's uh, I don't have 95 degree days yet, uh, so you're gonna have to enjoy those without me. Um, but but I miss coffee, so um, I'm really really glad we uh, you reached out. Uh, we're gonna talk today about one of those things that we sort of say to each other a lot, and uh, you you brought it up to me one day when we were having coffee, and uh, it's it's sort of worth talking about. You said, "What is it?" We're always saying it to each other, but to to err on the side of the gospel. Uh, what does this mean? Yeah, that's. That's a great question. I'm still thinking about it, even as we're talking here. Um, you probably, we probably have heard it as air on the side of grace, maybe from pastors or maybe a teacher. Um, yeah, what does that mean? Um, well, it you you probably want to deal with people in a certain way, or you want to handle a certain situation in a certain way. And you probably have something in your mind, maybe almost bullet point outline how they taught you. And, you know, I think about it as a pastor, here's, here's my response. I always want to be, you know, pastors, we Lutheran pastors like to correct people. So, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're like little sheepdogs. And, you know, the truth is we really need to just not sheepdog so hardcore right away and just listen, listen to what people have to say and, and find out where they're at. And then from there, uh, guide hopefully the conversation back to Christ, back to Jesus, and to err on the side of grace, I think it means that just guide them back to Christ, back to Jesus. It's not about winning a conversation. That's huge. Um, so, I, I mean, and then we can almost kind of look at this also in terms of, of what it's not, because uh, we, we sort of, to grab like how the world would talk, to sort of err on the side of grace would be Christians are just supposed to be nice all the time. Um, and ultimately, if you're erring on the side of grace, that's, that's just being, being kind, not being a jerk or, or any other cruder words that, that I know you're not thinking right now. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's not the same thing, though, as necessarily helpful. You said it's not about winning, but if we're bringing people back to Christ, then it is about helping. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I think, you know, you brought it to me sort of initially with almost the fear that we can sort of use that, uh, that, that mentality, that, that erring on the side of grace is almost, how do I get out of having a hard conversation with somebody that I don't want to have? Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. When I brought this to you, we had some coffee over this. I was thinking of a situation I had just recently been, been in, if I recall some of it. And it was a hard conversation because it was someone I had given time and love to as a pastor and really uh, was surprised by some comments that were said to me and shouldn't have been surprised, right? We're all sinners. Uh, but um, then at the same time, someone I'd given so much time and, and patience with, worked with, and we're questioning something in scripture and it was not something that I was making up. There was a very, there was an imperative. There was a command there. And in that moment, I just thought, how hard do I go on this person right now? Uh, do, and you know, I could, I could feel myself kind of getting worked up a little bit, the blood going and, and it's almost exciting. And the same time, you know, again, I was, I was thinking, this person is probably in a place where they were, and they were, they were coming, I think, from a place where they were hurting. They had just recently lost somebody and it had to do with this verse um, and this command. And uh, yeah, I just, I really wanted to make sure that I did have the conversation. So I, I listened to what they had to say and then realized they were, they were hurting. Uh, and I wanted to be, gracious i hope now that i'm thinking about it today someone would be treating me graciously as well they wouldn't just you're in the wrong you're absolutely wrong you can't do it that way you can't say it that way and you know maybe according from the scriptures i would be absolutely right and correct but from love we want to come at it from a loving uh not even just a loving point of view we want to come at it from love we want to love our neighbor love our brothers jesus says uh they'll know you are my disciples if you love one another now, we don't want to be nice. I think that's really important, too. Uh, nicety today is kind of like uh, being tolerant almost of anything. <laughs> and so in my mind, I was thinking, okay, I can't just tolerate something that's not true. So I had to just gently point out a few things, you know, and just said, okay, well, you know, right now, 
I think I told you this too, you're not really wrestling with me, you're wrestling with scripture. There's a command here. And I left it at that. And um, I, I could tell the person wanted to come at me too. And I, and I wonder if he was erring on the side of grace and he just, uh, no, no, no. So I hope that, does that answer your question? Get, get yeah, that? actually it's, it was funny. Um, completely out of the blue. Um, I was talking with, with my pastor here in Iowa and he, he said something that was really profound and it kind of, it was this, um, just completely unprompted. He said, you know, there are times when uh, I hear a thing and I just, I actually really want to answer them. And those are probably the times where I need to be measured. And there are times when I hear a thing and I don't want to get involved. And those, those might actually be the times when I, I need to, to find some courage and, and actually speak truth in love. Um, that the, the distinction between sort of um, just being right, because it feels so good to be right, uh, especially when yeah. somebody else is, is wrong in a way that makes me mad. Um, but but um, to, to err on the side of grace is sort of to recognize that there is such a thing as grace, that there is a Jesus who died for your neighbor, even your neighbor who is wrong about stuff. Um, and to, to um, err on the side of grace then is to point towards that Jesus who died for sinners and not simply yeah. how do I win this argument today, but but how do I ultimately move towards that that thing? And so it's not then just about this point. It, it's it that point doesn't go away. It doesn't cease to be important. But it, it means that maybe there's some unsaid stuff behind that question that they're wrong about that that we need to sort of tease out. Maybe it's a thing that we can speak the truth in love today and not win. But twenty years down the road, it's a conversation they might dwell on and and find some hope in. Um, the, the joy about helping is that you don't actually need to win um, because Christ has already won the war. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's the more humbling one, though. Absolutely. I was thinking, I have a verse here. I was thinking of Psalm 103, verse 8, that says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, man, how, how easy it is for any of us, whether pastor or not, maybe it's, you know, parents or high you know, team. It's, it's easy to get angry with those that disagree with us. And, and, and you might actually be correct. You might be hearing this and say, I was correct in that conversation, but did you, were you compassionate? Did you have pity? Were you, were you able to have a conversation? Maybe that's something, and I think it is, I think we're missing uh, right now often in our society. There's a lot of anger and bitterness, resentment in the media, wherever people go. And, um, you know, our, our Lord, thankfully, was perfect for our place. Like you said, he won the victory and it is humbling. And we pray that he gives us that strength. I think it was, ye- yeah, it was yesterday in First uh, Peter chapter 2 that, that Peter says, um, there's the passions of the flesh which wage on your soul. And what hatred and anger to want to just be right and not only right, just uh, you want to use your words to pound people <laughs> to the ground and you shouldn't and we shouldn't. Um, and that's the passion of the flesh. It's waging against our soul because we know uh, that Christ is one. We know that we are alive in him and we have this glorious, this joy, you know, waiting for us. Um, uh, that's not just in this life. It, it's to come. And, and it's also promised to us now, too. So we have like that little taste of it in Jesus that he's done it all. There is, you know. And so now rather than just rolling over and showing your belly, the way I think of it, uh, we, we want to have that conversation. Maybe at some point you have to say, you know, I spoke what I could say. I did what I could do. Um, I'm going to leave it in Jesus' hands and the Holy Spirit and have to move on. And that's the right place to leave it, too, because, I mean, if we're leaving it in the hands of the Holy Spirit, this is the place where, well, our, our catechism tells us this. So we believe that we cannot, by our own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, or come to him, uh, but that the Holy Spirit calls us by the gospel, enlightens, sanctifies, and keeps us in the true faith. And so if I can't just sort of learn the right answer, understand it, and choose Jesus, why would I expect me to be able to make other people do that thing? Like, if it's, if it's not my job to understand it, how is it my job to make you understand it? Instead, we... we commend it to the Holy Spirit who will work faith when and where he wills. And then it's a great joy to recognize just how confused the disciples were most of the time. Uh, it makes me feel better just as a, as a confused individual. But um, when, when they had no idea what was going on, like Jesus would tell them, I'm going to go into Jerusalem, die, and on the third day rise. And they're like, I don't understand what he's talking about. Uh, how do you get more clear than that? But also that didn't discount them from the kingdom. It, it was something that later they perceived um, in the right time. 
And so your words, uh, if the Holy Spirit will use them, will be used according to his time to err on the side of grace. Again, it, it's it's not to discount the law. It's it's not to sort of say, well, you know, uh, just be nice. It's to say there there are, is a gospel that calls, gathers, enlightens, sanctifies, and keeps. And so we're going to, to point to that in, in, in any way that we can and, and recognize that when and where God wills it, he works salvation. He works hope. He works faith. Right. Yeah, I think I, I was trying to, since we've spoken, had coffee on this conversation, I was thinking of how I applied it to my kids. I got four yeah. kids and a lot of energy. You, and you know what it's like. Um, and for those who are listening to, you know, we might think uh, our parents when we were younger, there were sometimes, there were times they disciplined us and we wished, man, I wish my mom and dad hadn't done that. Or they hadn't said that, or they hadn't taught me that. And then you get older and you're thinking, I'm really, I'm very thankful. They were very, they were far more patient than I get than that we give them credit for. And especially our Christian parents who probably have erred on the side of grace, knowing that we have a lot yet to learn in life. Um, they, they come back and forgive us. Uh, one of my kids, he, he's very sensitive to it. He'll say, dad, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. And, and I said, you're right. You're not, you're not perfect. And you are forgiven. You are forgiven in Jesus. Let's, let's talk about it. Let's work through this and let's grow. And, and it's been, it's, it's awesome to see how a kid, you know, and, you and I have been kids to see how we have grown and go, wow, God throughout our entire life has shown his grace to us, merciful, slow, uh, guiding us in his words, sending pastors, teachers, Christian friends into our lives, uh, or whoever reached into your, our lives um, to know who Christ is and to make him known as the one who is merciful. And he guides in his words and teaches. And there's times when we will be disciplined and it's not going to feel good. But it helps. it helps. He loves us. And we know we, we know we, right? The scriptures say we know that we are his children by this, <laughs> that he disciplines us. He loves us. I don't yell at other people's kids in Walmart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes that guy. Don't be that guy. Um, <laughs> so, so this is that. If there, if there has to be one thing, let it be that. Let it be Christ crucified. Um, and, and there's a lot of hope to be found in that, even while we struggle in this world. Yeah. Amen. Awesome. Pastor Reese, thank you so much for joining us here on the drive to school. Uh, it's great to have you. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me.